Happy Halloween, everybody. Welcome back to a brand new and very special episode of Cools Paranormal. Now, this past September, we had the opportunity to once again get back down to Alamosa, Colorado and check out, obviously, some of the places that perhaps you guys are familiar with, such as the Great Sand Dunes National Park, the Gator Farm, and even the renowned UFO Watchtower. But we were down there for a very special opportunity. See, we were invited by Adams State Dining to actually come down and give a presentation to the students about ghost hunting for National Ghost Hunting Day. Which, if you guys pay attention to the channel, we have already posted that. But we figured since it's Halloween, let's give you guys something spooky, right? And let's show you some of the evidence that we captured because not only did we give a presentation, but we were lucky enough to investigate Richardson Hall. Richardson Hall was the first building built for Adams State University back in the year of 1925. And so, definitely holds the opportunity to be perhaps haunted. There are quite a few stories, be it on the third floor with doors moving, or perhaps even the old janitor hanging around the auditorium. We were able to ghost hunt there for about four hours, and this is some of the stuff we captured. Howdy Cools Paranormal, my name's Colin. And the episode we'll be showing you today is going to be some of the evidence we found at NM State University down in Alamosa. We experienced a lot of more like personal interactions with them and unfortunately we didn't capture like any like manifested spirits or shadow figures. So first up we're going to show you this clip of the water bottle filling station uh, turning on by itself. Stops. What? <laughs> There's no reason so should be going. What? Well, I could just press the button. Well, I didn't press the button. I mean, I put my hand in front of Yeah, but it was going without anyone over here. Right. Now, we can't rule that this is just something that the machines do anyway perhaps to clean themselves or you know perhaps somebody had walked by and perhaps we just didn't notice but it happened twice and this video is actually the second time that it happened and for sure no one was over there because all of a sudden I popped out the phone and recorded it but we'll show it to you guys and let us know what you think in the comments below second up is this piece of EVP evidence or possible EVP evidence now what's really intriguing about this one is we caught it in two different places on two different cameras Though our EVP recorder, which was in the stairwell on the third floor, did not capture it. So we caught it both on the GoPro. as well as on my phone itself. It's a faint, almost like banshee-like scream, but it's pretty distant on both cameras. Now, we can't rule it out that perhaps someone outside or even someone inside had made the sound. We just thought it was really weird that we caught it at two very separate locations and at the same time our EVP recorder, which was catching a lot of noise, especially on that second floor, did not capture it. So now the next thing we'll talk about is orbs. Now orbs are a very controversial thing in the ghost hunting realm and for a majority of ghost hunters they do not see these as signs of hauntings and or signs of spirits. Uh, more or less, they're just balls of electricity. Now, could they be good for, you know, spirits using them for manifestations? It's possible. But at the same time, they're not definitive proof of a haunting, but they're always kind of cool to see. Uh, we did capture some, obviously, on the DVR, and we're going to show you a little comparison of dust versus some of these orbs. And 
they're also going to show you some pictures that the students, you guys, captured on the still cameras as well. Now there is some strange light anomalies and they don't act quite like orbs. Uh, they change shape, they kind of move around. They're anomalies that we've caught. And we're going to leave it up to you to kind of tell us what you think it is. And this one that I want to show you, I think to me is one of the more intriguing ones just because of the personal experience that me and Matt had at the time that we caught this footage. Now obviously we didn't know that this had happened, but in the footage that you're seeing, you see the light come up from behind Matt, go across to me, come down the hallway and then go into the little cafeteria through the open doorway. Now what's kind of intriguing about this is you add on the personal experience that me and Matt had where we're just sitting there asking some questions and we, at least I did, I thought I had heard Andrew call me twice. You actually see it in the video, we get up, Colin and Sam come back over and we actually go over and talk to Andrew. And to see something like this anomaly happen at the same time was very intriguing to me. So now, like Colin said, we unfortunately did not capture any like full-bodied spirits or any like definitive EVPs. And sometimes this happens, you know, you can go to a super haunted place and get absolutely nothing. Unfortunately, ghost hunting isn't that like perfect science at this moment. Something that, at least I think the serious ghost hunters are trying to strive forward. And so hopefully, us along with some of those others can help bring this to less stigmatized state and more of a real science and not just that pseudoscience state. But we'll leave you with one thing we caught on the spirit box. We were sitting in the auditorium. The auditorium had had instances where the lights had turned on. Now we can't rule it out that someone was doing it and we really didn't capture it on any of our cameras. Unfortunately it was so quick. But we were sitting there in the dark, me and Andrew, with the spirit box. Really no one else in the auditorium with us. And it says the F word, which you can probably hear here. Fuck. Fuck. Did you say fuck? Fuck. But yes, that was our time down at Adams State. We are so thankful for the invitation and opportunity to get down there. This is only going to be part two of a trilogy. Obviously, like I said, we've already posted our presentation. And I know I'm not the only one that shares this sediment. The rest of the group does as well. We would love the opportunity to come back and explore with the group again. You know, we had quite the turnout. And so most of all, we're just happy that I think that all these students really enjoyed their time there. Um, like I said at the beginning, like a lot of the experience was more of a personal experience. And I honestly felt like I was getting watched through some of the, the glass little doors and stuff that they had. There is a few places where you could see the darkness moving. And unfortunately it was through like a door with a glass window. So it was really hard to kind of focus the camera on it. So we, we do apologize we couldn't bring any of that to you because it was just a blurry mess. So there was definitely a lot of personal um, experiences that I think everyone has felt on this investigation. Even the, some of the kids that came and uh, came and joined the investigation with us they felt things, they interacted with things that they could even explain. I think that's amazing. I want to thank Adam State for inviting us into the college and definitely letting us investigate this amazing place. It was a fun time and 
we definitely would love to come back. Like I said, stay tuned. We'll post an investigation video coming up here soon. But it is Halloween, so don't stay too late. Don't get too spooked. Have a safe evening.